Well, welcome. Thank you for joining us here at the Mainframe 60 Summit. I've got another spotlight session, and today I'm joined by Phil Buckaloo from Rocket Software. Hey, Phil, welcome to the show. Thanks, Stephen. Great to be here. So, this is a fantastic time to capture the significance of the Mainframe platform. Maybe let's get started. Tell us a little bit about kind of your experience on the platform and position your role for Rocket and just maybe contextualize for our viewers and listeners. Sure, great. So I'm Phil Buckaloo. I lead the infrastructure modernization team. That's a team that has most of the mainframe assets that we build at Rocket Software. And we've got a lot of them. We've been around for a while and you know we're heavily invested in helping our customers make sure the mainframe is, is running up to speed. So mainframe 60 years on April 7th you guys have been with it we were talking off camera yeah. what is that the last 30 yeah give us maybe a bit of an arc of where rocket's been with the platform and and kind of how that growth happened sure the company started around 30 30 ish years ago when our founder Andy in a some in his basement you know began building some mainframe code to help do analytics and that was the product that became QMF it's widely deployed and used by many customers around the world today and from there, you know, the company continued to invest organically and inorganically, uh, made a number of acquisitions mm -hmm. over the years, and, and today, you know, we find ourselves in a position of being, you know, one of the leaders in the in the mainframe software space, and it's a it's a really important space given the importance of the mainframe itself. So exactly. So maybe that's a great way to sort of segue in. I mean, you've been with the platform. We've spoken a number of times. Maybe just give some context of kind of how you've seen that evolution over the next six, over the last sixty years for the platform, and and maybe the role it plays in society and kind of underpinning the the world's economy. Right. So, you know, the mainframe obviously had some advantages, and you know, there were early mainframes around at the time, and and some of the standardization that came in, and some of the ideas that IBM pushed out with backwards and forwards compatibility, those really took hold. And, and helped to, in many ways, democratize enterprise computing. And so, as a result of all of the growth historically, so much business today is conducted and run on mainframes. The transactions of the world do not flow without a mainframe. And so, you know, planes in the air, trains on time, credit card swipes, none of that stuff happens without the mainframe. And so, we know that it's, it is the business for many of our clients, um, and that's why it's so important. I, I, I had some dabblings with the mainframe myself. Well, first of all, my father was a COBOL programmer. Er, oh, so it's er, a family early business. Early on, so it's a bit of a family business. I think he actually bought one of the first mainframes um, for a retail company, Radio Shack, that okay. was along many, many, many years ago. So there's a little bit of a family lineage in there. I like it. And I, I did a little COBOL programming in school, so that was a lot of fun. Um, but you know, from there, my career, I spent a lot of time with IBM and lots of different parts of the software. We did some ports, spent a lot of time in mobile and cloud, mm -hmm. and, and then have come back to the mainframe and Rocket in the last couple of years. And it's, it's really been a fascinating journey to see how all of the world is, is modernizing and the mainframe just stays there at the core, pumping out transactions. Um, for all the companies of the world. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the sort of industry narrative, those who aren't close to the platform, maybe question the mainframe's relevance, as we've got cloud, we've got AI, we've got kind of all of these things and trends. For those of us involved in the platform, we see those exact same trends yeah. on the platform and where people are in their modernization journey. Where do you see that kind of relevance of the mainframe still today? Do you see it still kind of evolving and staying current? Honestly, it's incredibly relevant. Mm -hmm. And having worked in a lot of the, you know, the other, the, the newer, you know, businesses, you know, prior to this, I've seen that like different approaches to computing, different, different models, different systems, even different hardware and software, they have value in and of themselves. And mobile computing, I mean, look at the revolution that that had and the impact that that had on all of our lives. Um, that's been fantastic. At the same time, there's still tremendous benefit in being able to have those core transactional systems running and flowing without disruptions that happen. And so, in many ways, 
modernization has occurred all around the mainframe, but the mainframe's core value is still being delivered day in and day out. And so that's why it continues to maintain, to, to have, maintain its hold on running the transactions of the world. Yeah, I mean, I think for me it's the performance, availability, scalability, security. All of those things are as relevant today as they were in, in 1964. There is the platform, well, as you say, things are modernizing around, maybe their systems of engagement are changing. Systems of record like the mainframe need to evolve and stay current. So we're recording this in 2024. Yeah. We've gone about seven or eight minutes in and we've not mentioned AI. We've got to talk about that. I think the whole industry is abuzz with AI right now. How are you seeing that sort of machine learning, artificial intelligence, inference training, kind of all of the kind of buzzwords that we're hearing that have taken hold in the market over the last 18 months? How are you seeing those contextualized in the context of the mainframe? Well, in a couple of different, it's really happening in a couple of different vectors. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, AI is becoming pervasive in, in, in everything. We, yeah. we added AI capabilities to our documentation portal, and we've been getting great feedback because clients can find what they're looking for so much more easily. We've added AI into a number of our monitoring and systems management products to be able to do both the predictive AI to figure out what's going or that, That's one of the areas I'm problems. seeing kind of a lot of transition. AI ops, yeah. being able to, those guys on the front line, dealing with alert fatigue, you know, th that's one area I see a really easy transition. Are you seeing the same? Absolutely, I mean, a lot of that is predictive AI, but mm -hmm. then, you know, there's a lot of generative AI that's happening really across the stack on our content management business, mm -hmm. trying to help make sense of, 20 years worth of bills and helping somebody find a particular account balance from you know decades ago that's the kind of thing that is made possible with AI and so not to mention the benefit on developers both at our clients and internally and what they can increasingly use AI to help help you know write code and and test harnesses and test data and all of those things are really really coming in into the fold as well well I see as a, I mean I see it across a number of fronts you talked about your end customers being able to find information about the platform and navigate through mm -hmm. a huge document library and f be able to get technical answers quicker. I think this is the ops lens, makes a lot of sense. Those guys are always stressed, always on the front line, always dealing with issues and problems. But then I think the other one that you mentioned, and it's just as we hear a lot about co-pilots and developer assistance in AI, I think that's just as relevant on the mainframe platform as it is on any of the others. It, it, it really is, and, and you know, there's a lot of different languages. Some are more akin to some of the generative mm -hmm. AI tools that have you know, been around. Um, but there's, there's tremendous usage for AI really across the development process, and there's lots of different parts of the development process, and we're finding novel and unique ways to incorporate AI in, in all of those. Not to mention, you know, working with our clients, and our clients are adding tons of AI into their business processes, into their businesses. The mainframe itself, as we spoke about, is so important to their transactional execution. And so being able to have models that are trained, and maybe they're trained on the mainframe, maybe they're trained on public clouds or some other um, elastic compute environment, but those models, as they're being executed, can can make better decisions and you can have better transactions and all that needs to happen super fast and that's why IBM's investment in the Telem chip and all of the services to run those AI applications quickly as a part of the transactions, that's why that's so meaningful. Well, I think, you know, we see a lot about generative AI, we see a lot around the sort of image use cases and these sort of um, forward-looking use cases. I think for me it's as, it's as valuable for the impact on some of those transactional workloads and you know the fraud use cases and is this a real transaction that we should be approving as it is for some of these kind of more headline grabbing use cases. So as we transition here, Rocket's been involved in the platform 
going back to Andy's uh, sort of, I love that developer story, that yeah, kind of, yeah. the classic sort the of, garage. the hoodie developer <laughs> sort of hacking at code. I didn't know that story, but that's fascinating. You guys have been champions of the platform over that the last 30 years. Some big things going on with you guys. Where's that going? If we look forward, maybe give us the, the next sort of, five, ten years. I know there's some, 2024 is a big year for Rocket, mm -hmm. but where do you see that longer term? At, at our core, Rocket is about helping our clients to modernize. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, even though they're in many cases working with transactions that are running on a platform that's 60 years old, there's still a lot of modernization that's happening. And it's happening all around. Mm -hmm. It's happening in their development processes. It's happening in the way they handle security across the platform. It's happening um, in the way that they're looking at and monitoring and running their workloads in their environment. So it's really having a pervasive impact upon their environment. We also recognize that clients are doing a lot of great things in other areas, like in public clouds or in hybrid clouds, distributed environments. And increasingly, we know that the mainframe, in some ways, it's because of its success and because of the way it grew up, it's in, in some, uh, some clients, it's much more siloed than it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And really, you know, democratizing and, and helping it it behave much more like a lot of the rest of the systems while still preserving those characteristics of security and reliability. Um, that's really where we see a role um, for Rocket and especially in hybrid cloud. So, so many of our clients have embraced having some parts of their workloads that, that might run in public clouds, but those core transactions are running on the mainframe and facilitating that, making that easy, safe, reliable, mm -hmm. that's really been a part of our strategy. And that's at the heart of, you know, we recently announced um, an acquisition from some of the assets of, um, of AMC, um, some of the former microfocus assets, and, and that they bring a lot of new capabilities that continue to help clients as they modernize, really, you know, wherever they are in the journey, however they've, you know, assessed their business as, as fitting best across these different approaches and platforms, we want to help meet them. I think that's the key phrase for me, modernize wherever they are in their journey. I think, you know, you can get bought into on-platform, off-platform, public cloud, on-premises. I think for me the key message is wherever people are in their journey, whatever they're thinking, you guys are going to be positioned to be able to help them on that journey. Absolutely, and we, like we did some research last year, and you know it was like over 90% of the people that responded said they, they plan to embrace hybrid strategies. And so if that's where the market is, you know, that's exactly where, where we are, yeah. and because we want to help our clients and be the most useful in that context. Give them as much optionality and as many w different ways to uh, sort of go through their mo frame modernization journey as possible, right? Right, right. So as we look to wrap here, we're sort of doing this as part, themed as part of the mainframe's 60th anniversary. Maybe give us that sort of forward-looking statement, wrap us up here and take us home. What would you see the next 60 years looking like? Well, it's interesting. And that's a, that's a tough question, because I don't think 60 years ago anybody would have predicted we are where we are today, but so I'm giving you the tough one to... 60 years is a long time. But interestingly, I did go back and look at some of the, some of the press clippings and other articles okay. around the 50th anniversary. Yeah. And you know, it, it's interesting in that there was a lot more talk about the impact that mobile was going to have and and cloud services were a little bit more muted. There wasn't any talk of AI, mm -hmm. but you know, you still talk about the value the mainframe brings and like handling all these core transactions. And having worked on public clouds for five years, I realized that there are, that there's physical differences with the way things are set up, no. not to mention decades of business rules being codified for enterprises. And I just don't really see that that moving away as fast as other ones. There's, there's so many ways to modernize and add value to your business around the edges versus trying those, you know, very difficult, challenging 
rewrite all your business processes to a cloud native, you know, approach. Rip and replace. Th th those those projects have typically not been successful. Yeah. And and there's less and less need for them the more the mainframe just becomes a part of the rest of your computing it's system. It's an open platform, it's a cloud ready platform, it's a core constituent of a hybrid cloud strategy. If it's all those things, why do I need to rip and replace I, I, it? Right? That's what increasingly many, many CIOs and and companies that we talk to are realizing that it's just another piece of, of a hybrid approach that they're taking to their business. And as long as it's meeting those needs cost effectively, reliably, securely, then it's not something that you really need to go change. And if you can add a lot of innovation around it, interacting with it, then that's really how you meet the needs of your, of your business. Well, Phil, as always, great to chat. I think you did a great job of bringing us home. You've been listening to Phil Buckaloo from Rocket Software here on our Mainframe 60 Summit. Join us for the next episode and we'll see you soon.